don't know if you know this, but most people just can't commit fraud and expect to face no repercussions, even if everyone's doing it. Uh, daily Show host John Stewart. It's no longer a Daily Show because it wasn't profitable, obviously, and uh, he's now doing it once a week, but they still call it The Daily Show. Uh, and here he is going after Kevin O'Leary. Now, Kevin O'Leary, we've shown you a bunch of clips of him lately because he is has been defending Donald Trump in these clown court cases. Again, the major case was the New York case, which was about overinflating the property, uh, Trump's properties for loans. Everybody got paid back. Trump was still fined 464 million, which a later judge, an appeals court lowered to 175 million. But Kevin O'Leary has been defending him and saying this is this is not even about Trump. This is about weaponized judicial systems. That really is the problem. But the machine has brought John Stewart back to try to take out anyone that makes sense. Take a look at this comedy. Yeah, I guess we'll call it comedy. Okay. Surprised to hear this from Kevin O'Leary, a guy who's such an. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> that even the other people on Shark Tank think he's an. <laughs> now, he's very chill. How is he not this mad about overvaluations in the real world? Because they are not victimless crimes. First, the banks got paid back at lower interest rates. Although, to be honest, who gives a. But second, money isn't infinite. A loan that goes to the liar doesn't go to someone who's giving a more honest evaluation. So the system becomes incentivized for corruption. And this is part of a different Trump fraud case, but avoiding taxes hurts all of us. Donald Trump shenanigans cost the city of New York. And to be honest, entitled arrogance. I don't know if you know this, but most people just can't commit fraud and expect to face no repercussions, even if everyone's doing it. Try getting a car loan by saying you have 10 times as much money as you really do, or claim 20 dependents when you have no children, or say you make slightly less money to qualify for food assistance. I will guarantee you there are not just financial consequences for those lies, but criminal ones. But don't tell that to the investment community, because in their minds, in pursuit of profit, there is no rule that cannot be bent. There is no principle that cannot be undercut as long as you and your f***ing friends are making money. Um, everything he just said there was the reverse of the truth, because if you go for a car loan, you can't just tell the bank, right? So you go to buy... Uh, I remember my last car loan was to get a Chevy Equinox. I didn't walk into Chevy and just say, hey, I'd like to put down $200. Could you lay out the 25 grand for me? And they're like, well, you'd like 25 grand. We sure'd like to give it to you. No, they do a credit check on you. They see how much credit they think you'll be able to pay back and what the interest rate's going to be and everything else, which is exactly what the banks did as it pertained to Trump. And then the banks all got paid back. So these people, they... John Stewart, like you're worth, you've got to be worth probably a hundred mil, and you hate the system that allowed you to do that. That's deeply depressing, at the very least. But of course, the internet sleuths—they uh, get into stuff pretty quickly. And then this came out literally yesterday, within 24 hours of John Stewart doing that bit. Uh, this is from the New York Post. It didn't take long for the internet sleuths to look into Stewart's own property history, which shows his New York City penthouse sold for 829% more than its assessed value, records confirmed by the Post reveal. In 2014, Stewart sold his 6,280-square-foot uh, 6, Tribeca duplex to financier Parag Pandey for 17.5 mil. The property's asking price at the time is not available in the listing records, but according to 2013-2014 assessor records obtained by the Post, the property had the estimated market value of 1.882 million. The actual assessor valuation was even lower at 847,000. Records also show that Stewart paid significantly lower property taxes, which were calculated based on the assessor valuation price, precisely what he called Trump out for doing in his Monday monologue. Hande, who purchased the penthouse from Stewart, then resold the property at a nearly 26% loss, according to the real deal, at just 13 million in 2021. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, Stewart did respond to it. I think it's worth reading his glib response. OMG, I've been caught doing something not remotely similar to Trump. Actually, the same thing. I guess all I need to do now is start a fraud college, steal classified docs, bankrupt casinos, pay hush money, grab <laughs> discriminate in housing, cheat at golf, and foment insurrection, and you'll revere me. All right. Yeah, like, 
Okay, so the machine pays you well to do that stuff.